Electrum. It's a word that sounds like it belongs in a science fiction novel or a Marvel movie, but this substance has been part of human civilization for thousands of years. Often referred to as green gold, due to its pale, sometimes greenish hue, Electrum is one of the oldest known naturally occurring metal alloys. It was one of the earliest metals used for coinage, jewelry, and decoration, even before people learned how to separate gold from silver. But how exactly is Electrum made? Is it entirely natural, or can we create it today? Let's dive into the brilliant world of this ancient metal and discover how Electrum comes to life, right here on History of Simple Things. Electrum is a naturally occurring alloy primarily composed of gold and silver, with trace amounts of other elements such as copper and sometimes platinum or palladium. Its color ranges from a pale yellow to a greenish or even whitish hue, depending on the silver content. The more silver, the lighter the color. In the ancient world, people didn't yet have the technology to separate gold from silver, so they worked with what nature gave them. Electrum was seen as valuable and mystical because of its unusual appearance and scarcity. Civilizations like the ancient Egyptians, Greeks, and Lydians prized Electrum not only for its beauty but also for its usefulness. It was durable yet malleable, and it didn't corrode easily, making it ideal for everything from ornate cups and jewelry to some of the world's first coins. Now let's talk about how Electrum forms in nature. This remarkable alloy is typically found in riverbeds or embedded in rock formations, much like gold itself. Electrum forms when gold and silver deposits occur close together underground. Over time, due to high temperatures and pressures deep within the Earth's crust, these metals mix together during geological processes like hydrothermal activity. Essentially, superheated water rich in minerals flows through cracks in the Earth's crust, dissolving metals like gold and silver along the way. As these fluids cool, the metals begin to crystallize and settle out of the solution, sometimes forming pure metals and other times combining into natural alloys, like electrum. The presence of trace elements such as copper gives electrum a unique chemical signature, and geologists can even tell where a sample of electrum likely came from based on its specific mix of elements. But what if we want to make Electrum today? Is it possible to replicate nature's process in a modern lab or workshop? Absolutely. Producing Electrum today is a relatively simple process, at least in theory. Since Electrum is just an alloy of gold and silver, creating it involves melting both metals together in precise proportions. First, gold and silver are measured and weighed according to the desired ratio. Commonly, the natural mix is around 70% gold to 30% silver, but this can vary. The metals are then placed in a crucible, which is a container that can withstand extremely high temperatures. Once the metals reach a liquid state, they are stirred to ensure uniform distribution, then poured into molds to cool and solidify. Depending on the desired application, whether for jewelry, electronics, or coinage, the ratio can be adjusted. Adding small amounts of copper or palladium can modify the hardness and color further. What makes this process fascinating is the balance between artistry and chemistry. Electrum wasn't just pretty, it was powerful. In ancient Lydia, now Turkey, Electrum was used to mint the world's first known coins around 600 BCE. These early coins were stamped with the image of a lion and used for trade, marking a revolution in economic history. Because Electrum coins had variable gold and silver content, their value fluctuated, which eventually led to efforts to refine gold and silver separately. Still, the use of Electrum in currency shows how early civilizations understood its worth. The Egyptians also used Electrum extensively in religious artifacts, even the legendary Mask of Agamemnon, once thought to be made of gold, 
has been debated by some scholars as potentially being Electrum. In essence, Electrum bridged the gap between gold and silver both physically and symbolically, representing wealth, purity, and power in many cultures. Today, Electrum is not as widely used as it once was, mostly because we have advanced ways of separating and refining precious metals. However, there's still a niche fascination with Electrum, especially among jewelers, collectors, and historians. Some artisans prefer working with Electrum because of its unique color and heritage. Its natural luster, which is softer than gold yet warmer than silver, gives it an old-world charm that modern alloys can't quite replicate. In some high-end jewelry circles, Electrum is enjoying a quiet comeback. Museums and archaeologists also study Electrum to better understand ancient metallurgy and trade. By analyzing the specific composition of ancient Electrum artifacts, researchers can trace where the metals came from, revealing trade routes and cultural connections. So even though it's not used every day like it once was, Electrum continues to shine as a window into human history and the evolution of technology. Electrum is more than just an alloy. It's a testament to the complexity and beauty of the natural world and to the ingenuity of the people who first recognized its value. Understanding how Electrum is formed, both naturally in the depths of the earth and artificially in modern foundries, gives us a deeper appreciation for the materials we often take for granted. It's a reminder that even the oldest elements can still inspire wonder when we look at them closely. So next time you see something made of Electrum, remember, you're not just looking at metal. You're looking at a story that began thousands of years ago, forged by nature and refined by human hands. It's a blend of Earth's natural artistry and human curiosity. One that tells a story of beauty, technology, and tradition. Whether formed in the depths of the Earth or crafted by human hands, Electrum remains a shining example of how science and history come together in something truly precious. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.